We'll take a few minutes here to show you from the scriptures that Jesus Christ is the only head of his church. No man can claim the title of head of the Christian church. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. The Probably the most important verse to a Roman Catholic is this scripture right here because this is the supposed foundation of the Roman Catholic Church. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right, and they'll say, well, Jesus sets up Peter as the first pope, the first head of the Christian church. I want to show you why that doesn't work. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Jesus was not talking about Peter. He was talking about himself. How do you know that? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to point out the very obvious fact that in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, Jesus says to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. It's kind of a rough thing to say to the man that you just established your church on. Point number two is, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Um, and yet you have many Catholics today saying that there is an Antichrist, that Pope Francis is an Antichrist Pope, and that the Second Vatican Council brought in an Antichrist church. But I thought the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against the church. That's kind of a problem, isn't it? It's funny, too, because the Catholic Church talks about unity and the unity of Christ's one true church and the Protestants with all their 30,000 denominations, and they, you need the unity of the Catholic Church, and yet they don't have unity. Kind of interesting. But turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. I'm going to show you that the foundation, the rock upon which the church is built upon, is Jesus Christ, and the Bible plainly teaches that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. People, the church, not basilicas, cathedrals, church buildings, whatever, be they Protestant or Catholic. I'm not a Protestant, by the way, either. I do protest things in Rome, but I don't seek to reform Rome. Verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another uh, buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Foundation, what is that? That would be the rock. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Write this down if you're a Roman Catholic. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is the rock upon which the church is built. He's the foundation. I'll show you more on that just here in a little bit. Now, if any man built upon this foundation, Jesus Christ, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire." It's not talking about purgatory, by the way, if you're a Roman Catholic. That's one of the ways that they'll twist that thing. Uh, it's talking about your works being burned up at the judgment seat of Christ. Your works are going to be tried by fire. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. There we see it again. What's St. Peter's Basilica all about then? And all the millions and millions and millions that that thing went into building it centuries ago. You know, untold billions now if you wanted to try to build something like that. I don't even think modern day builders could have the talent for that anymore. People were a lot smarter in the past, contrary to what evolution theory teaches. But what's it all about? What are the basilicas about? What are, what are the cathedrals and the church buildings everywhere? What's it all about? If you, you are God's building. Again, all this, this is the church. Jesus Christ founded the church on, on St. Peter and it's come down through the apostolic succession to what we had today in the Roman Catholic Church. Then why are they disobeying Scripture? Ye are God's building. Oh, hey, let's go build these big, huge buildings that cost, you know, Christians untold millions and billions of dollars. Why? Show me one verse of Scripture where God ever told anybody to build a building and invite both saved and lost into it. 
Verse 18, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Let no man glory in men. Is that what Roman Catholics do when they see the Pope coming? And look at this. Verse 22. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, another one of Peter's names, Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Wait a second there, Paul. Why would you put yourself on the same plane as Paul, Apollos, and Cephas? You're not to glory in any of them. But Cephas is the first pope, according to Catholic teaching. Doesn't work. Luke chapter 6. Go to Luke chapter 6. What about this thing of the rock? Luke chapter 6, verse 47 through 49. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. I'm talking about this is Jesus speaking. If a man comes to me and does and does my sayings, I'll show you what he's like. Verse forty-eight. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Upon this rock I will build my church. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You see, those of us that have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I could really care less what goes on over in Rome and the Vatican. I'd, oh, Pope Francis is the first Jesuit pope. He shouldn't be a pope. He's not uh, a special priest and whatever else and things, a sacerdotal priest or something like this. So he's not qualified and he also departs from the Catholic. I could care less what the pope does. I could care less what any of these pervert priests do that are molesting children all the time and things like that, and the nuns and the monks and whoever. It doesn't affect my salvation. You see? Why? Because my salvation is founded upon a rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ. A perfect man is the foundation for my faith. Not a bunch of perverts over in Rome. Verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. How many church buildings out there, be they Protestant or Catholic, fell because people were putting their faith in that great man of God, and all of a sudden the guy gets caught in adultery. The priest gets caught molesting children. They're putting their faith in something that's founded upon the earth. Oh, it's the church that, that, that that's founded upon Peter. Peter's the rock. Well, then it would fall. I mean, the Peter, in the exact passage where Jesus is saying, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, a few verses later, within minutes, he's calling him Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. And yet, Catholics come along and they say, Peter. The, uh, the rock is Peter and the Catholic Church. He, he, he was given the keys of the kingdom and he's, he's all this stuff. That, you know, Peter, it's Peter. That's why you have so many Catholics that become disillusioned later on in life. Because they were either molested as a child or they see other children that have been molested and things and they see the corruption and the wickedness. Old father so-and-so, they see him, holy man up there performing the mass, you know, and then they see him stumbling out of a bar sometime. Or they hear about other illicit things, or he's whatever. You see, if the foundation of your church is a man or a man made system that's constantly in error, then you are going to fall apart when times get rough. But if your foundation is a perfect, sinless man, God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ then it doesn't matter what people do or what people say or whatever else. It doesn't matter. My personal relationship with Jesus Christ is founded upon His Word.
need to think about that. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We'll show you another couple of verses here before we're done. Talking about who is the head of the Christian church. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 through 24. And all this is written at the time Peter is alive. Okay, remember that. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Did you get that? And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto the Pope. No, it doesn't say that. The, the magisterium. No, it doesn't say that. The um, uh, Southern Baptist Conference. No, it doesn't say that. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You want to have anything to do with the saints, right? You want, to, you want to be a saint in things possibly someday? If you're Catholic. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. The Pope can't do anything without the Lord's uh, permission. Neither can any president or king or anybody else. You would certainly agree with me on that if you're a Roman Catholic, wouldn't you? I would hope that you would agree that Jesus Christ is before all things. Look at verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who? What's the context? Peter? Nope. It's about Jesus Christ. He's the head of the church. And it doesn't mean, well, uh, vicarious Philly D or something like this, or the Pope is, is the vicar of Christ, and he, he is Christ and things like this, like official Catholic doctrine says. That's blasphemy. How can a sinful man take the position of Jesus Christ? Can't happen. Verse 18, And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Jesus Christ has the preeminence. Not the Pope. How often do you think Jesus Christ is being glorified when the Pope goes in his little Pope mobile thing and everybody's screaming and yelling and things like this. Oh, could you just, could the Pope just look my way? Could you kiss my baby and stuff like this? Where's Jesus Christ getting any glory in that situation? Verse 19, For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. The blood of His cross is how you get saved. Not the first uh, or the last supper there with, you know, the first Eucharist as the Catholics teach. That's not going to do it. First Timothy chapter 2. One more verse. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You don't need to come to me. I'm not in, on some kind of a power trip or something like this, and I want to steal you away from Roman Catholicism that you can come and be one of my disciples or something like this. Uh, that doesn't work. I'm pointing you, you, to Jesus Christ. I want you to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ as I have. I was raised as a, a quote-unquote Christian in an independent Bible church, and as I grew up, I started to see a lot of things that were going on in there that uh, didn't match the Bible, just like a lot of you Catholics do. 
if you read the Bible, if you take the time to read the Bible, but even if you don't, if you have any sense at all, you can see that there's corruption in the Catholic Church. Of course you can. And uh, you go to another church then, and you try another one, and you try another one, and you try another one. You're trying to build your foundation upon the earth, you see. And what you need to do is you need to get to a point where you say, you know what, there's only one man in the universe that I can put my faith in, that I know I can stand upon him and have that personal relationship with him, and he's never going to let me down. And that's Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay for your sins. That's what you need in your life. And you need His Word. You can watch some of my other studies. I'm not going to get into a big salvation message here. But you need His Word to guide you. You can't think about catechisms. Where's my catechism? Right there it is. You can't think about catechisms to tell you what you need to do. You can't think of... Uh, the canons and decrees of the Council of Trent. Let's see what other things I have here. Three editions of the Baltimore Catechism. Yes, I've studied Catholicism quite extensively. Up here we have the original 1610, four volume, uh, 1582 1610 Dewey Reams. Translation, official Catholic translation. I have other Catholic translations down there, New American Bible, all this different stuff. I've studied Roman Catholicism. And it's faulty. It doesn't line up with the Scriptures. And I've studied the Baptists. And they have a lot of things that don't line up with Scripture. And the Presbyterians, and the Methodists, and the Episcopalians, and the Lutherans, and whoever. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You and Him. Do you understand? Peter is not the rock that the church is founded upon. Jesus Christ is the rock that the church is founded upon. 